Hello friends, this video on conservation of plants and animals part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us talk about national park. So here I have shown few pictures and I have taken them from Wikipedia to tell you how exactly national parks look like. So it is an area owned and protected by national government for conservation of plants and animals. Now since it is owned by national government, so they, are, they have been named as national park. However, they are also run by state governments as well. In these parks, visitors are allowed to enter but the park will be protected from human exploitation. That is, they, you visitors are not allowed to hunt animals or they are not allowed to cut down trees. Now, you might ask that which park can be a national park? You would have often seen small park in your locality also where you might be going for um, a, a morning walk or where your kids might be going to play around. So, are those parks also national parks? Not really. Because there are certain criteria which are required to evaluate a national park. For example, the minimum size of the park should be 1000 hectares. So, the minimum size for a park to be declared as a national park should be 1000 hectares which is quite big. The park should also have sufficient budget and staff so that it can take care of the, so that they can maintain the cleanliness of the park, they can maintain the animals which are living in that park. Exploitation activities should be prohibited so the park should have strict rules that uh, exploitation of plants and animals are not allowed. So here on the screen you can see Manas National Park here and this Manas National Park is in Assam. Again here you see the Ranthambo National Park and this is in Rajasthan. So if you see these parks they have lot of greenery because the trees are not allowed to be cut down. So they are like a big area full of plants animals and they live in their own way that is they do not have to live in an artificial environment so they live freely in their own way they are safe enough because there is nobody to harm them there is nobody to kill them so that is how a national park is maintained next is a wildlife sanctuary so this is an area which provides protection primarily to wildlife against hunting and predation so that because a lot of animals get killed by hunting or by predation that is some other animals come and then they eat up all these animals and that's how they finish completely. So therefore these sanctuaries provide special protection to wild animals and it is exclusively for wild animals. It also helps to protect the endangered species that means species which are already lesser in number and they are on the verge of extinction. So their numbers are also closely monitored. For example, as I was telling, if you look at the Bengal tiger, so every year they will do some calculation and the status, they closely observe the statistics for such animals, which are just three or four in number in the entire country. So they closely monitor the numbers and see that how their number can be maintained, how those animals can give birth to new animals and that's how their number can increase. So for that, it is very important that those few animals are well protected and conserved. Now sometimes there are some wildlife sanctuaries which also act as rehabilitation center for animals. Now, some animals which are uh, which have fallen sick or which are injured or which and uh, which are, who have been abandoned. So these kind of animals are taken in by such rehabilitation center and then they are nursed. And once they become once they become fine, then they are released back into the sanctuary. So that's how wildlife sanctuary works. So here you can see the picture which shows the bhad wildlife sanctuary so here you can see a tiger so here these animals they again stay safe here so you might be wondering then more or less we are doing the same thing in a wildlife sanctuary and a national park so I mean how much of a difference is there between the two so first if you talk about the similarities yes both of these are working towards the same goal and that is conservation of plants and animals so bio biodiversity conservation is the goal of both national park as well as wildlife sanctuary however there are quite a few differences because of which i mean you have to separate things otherwise you would just have had one thing so 
Let us see how exactly a national park is different from a wildlife sanctuary. So if you talk about a wildlife sanctuary here, the ownership might be with the government. It might also be with a private person or it might be with a private organization. So it depends. The ownership lies with whom. But with in case of a national park, the ownership mostly lies with the government, whether the national government or the state government. But the ownership is with the government. In case of wildlife sanctuary, there is no physical boundary as such to restrict public access. So that means it, it is not surrounded by a boundary to say that, okay, this is this particular wildlife sanctuary. So you don't have anything like boundary. So that means people can enter into it because from some other other way. However, here also there are restrictions for human exploitation. People are not allowed to kill animals. People are not allowed to cut down forests. So they are not going to, they are not allowed to cause any sort of harm to the animals. But since there is no physical boundary present, so sometimes people might enter into the uh, sanctuary illegally. Whereas in case of national park, they have a defined boundary and public access is allowed only after approval. So what kind of approval, for example, if you want to, if you visit a particular national park, say uh, you are going to visit uh, Bandipur National Park. So what will happen? You are just not allowed to enter into the national park. You need approval, approval in the form of tickets. So you need to buy tickets when you get the tick. Once you get the tickets, you are allowed to enter into the national park. And then you go inside the national park and you will be taken in a vehicle. And then you visit the national park and you come back. So you were allowed to enter only after the approval. You are not supposed to enter without tickets. But in case of wildlife sanctuary, there is no defined boundary as such. So sometimes people might enter illegally. Wildlife sanctuary's aim is primarily to protect animals, especially the endangered ones. National Park protects animals as well as plants as well as historic objects. Now what kind of historic objects? For example, uh, if you look at many national park, they have many historic uh, evidences. For example, rock paintings or rock shelters. So these kind of things give evidences of the prehistoric human life in the jungles. So all those objects or all those evidences are also well protected so that uh, people can come and they can have a look at that. So they gain some knowledge about the uh, history. Wildlife sanctuary is large, but national park is larger with more diversity. So here it is more diversified. So that's why if you see in India, the number of wildlife sanctuaries are more, but size wise they are smaller. But national parks, they are quite larger and since they are larger, so, the, so they can accommodate more variety of plants, animals. So that's how wildlife sanctuary and national park, they differ from each other. However, both of them aim towards conserving biodiversity. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.